welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com, I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the flowers dishcloth. Now, the puff stitch that is used in here makes me create words that are not really appropriate for families, <laughs> depending what family you have in your life. And today is my fourth video filming that I'm doing, so I'm kind of on a binge session, so I'm getting, getting kind of cranky. So we have uh, instructions on the second one with a, a diagram that you can follow if you want to. I'm definitely going to follow it. Now, because the puff stitch makes me so aggressively angry, because I think it needs to be wiped off the face of the earth, I'm going to show you the bean stitch, which is very similar to it, but it, it doesn't get snaggy on the on the hook. So if you don't want to have issues and you don't want to be creating words like yours truly here, that is the super genius on camera today, then the bean stitch is a better way to go. So this is the bean stitch here. Do you see much of a difference? Well, of course not because the picture's not very clear. <laughs> But you can see it looks quite fabulous and it's fun and this is going to be today's video. But let's begin this journey right now. If you're new to the yarn arts or new to this concept, this is 100% cotton. In Canada, it would be called Bernat Handicraft or it could be called Peaches and Cream, Creme de la Creme. And in the US, it's primarily Lily Sugar and Cream. It is 100% cotton. You don't want to use any kind of acrylics like your Red Heart Super Saver, Bernat Super Value. Um, because that's acrylic and it doesn't get rid of the water fast enough and you'll have a molding issue where this is 100% cotton that's grown in the United States. Let's begin and do this process now. I'm creating a slip stitch and then I want to chain a total of 26. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and do 26 and meet me back here in a moment. Let's begin the first row going back across your chain. You're going to go second chain from the hook. So when you go into the chain, I usually go into the back hump. In this case, I'm not going to because there's no border. So I'm going to go second chain from the hook and I'm gonna single crochet in. And now we're gonna do the flower concept. And it's done through puff stitching, but I'm gonna show you two as a bean stitch. So you're going to skip two stitches. So one and two, so two chains, go to the third and you are not gonna wrap your hook first as the bean stitch. Go to the nut stitch yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and going into the same chain, going in and yarn over, pull through and do that one more time. So yarn over and into the same chain pull and pull through. So you have this clump of fun. <laughs> so what I want you to do is that I want you to yarn over and pull through this group and not this one yet. So you're going to yarn over, pull through because you've done the bean stitch, it should come out pretty easily. And then you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, and that's the completion of the bean stitch. And now we're gonna move on. So chain two, and in the same chain, you're gonna do that again. So the trick is, is not to wrap the hook first, so, and then pull through. Then yarn over and in to the same chain, pull through, yarn over, same chain, pull through. So you then, once you have that done, pull through everything but the final loop and then pull through the final two and then that's complete and you're going to do that one more time. So chain up two and then into the same one. So just go right in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, going in, pull through, yarn over and in, pull through. Pull through the group of fun and pull through. And at the end of this now, you just want to chain only one and you want to come back down on the chain and you want to try to see where you are in the chain. So just pull things and you're going to skip two and go to the third chain and single crochet. So you're creating these flowering concepts. So let's start another one. So you're going to skip two, one and two, go to the third and bean stitch. So going in, pull through, yarn over, and into the same one, pull through, yarn over into the same one, pull through. Pull through the group of fun, and then pull through two, and then chain two, and do another one in there again. So right in first, pull through. So by not wrapping the hook the first time, going in, it doesn't want to snag on it to itself. It creates an extra space that you need to be able to slide your hook in and out of these stitches a lot easier. So if, you, if crochet could make you cranky, the, uh, the puff stitch for me makes me really aggressively angry. 
and I know it's crochet, but you know. So do your third one in. So just going in. And the chain, the beginning chain is always a pain. So if it's hard for you, it's not so fun for me either. So, it, but you gotta start somewhere. So after you have the, this all in, you're gonna chain up one. You'll skip two more on the chain, single crochet in. And then you'll skip two more and then start doing the same concept and just immediately start to bean stitch. And I'll meet you at the end of the row in a moment. So at the end, the very last chain, you'll have a single crochet in it. Now the first row is a bit of a beast, just so you know, but once you have it done, the rest of it, it becomes much easier. And so you'll have four groups of these um, shells that you see. And so now what you're going to do is that you're gonna turn your work and we're gonna go through rows number one, or sorry, rows number two through to five, which will be the repeat pattern. And you, when you do this, number two will be your very final row at the end. Let's turn our work and start row number two. Row number two, right where you're sitting, you're going to want to chain three. That'll count as your first double crochet. And you need to double crochet into the same one where you are. You're now gonna chain two and come to the middle flower Okay, so the middle of the bean stitch or the puff stitch and just single crochet in to hold it. Then chain two. And now the rest of them in between all of the flowers in the single crochet, you are just going to apply three double crochets into those. So we have one, two, and three. Then chain two. And then come into the middle one of the puff stitch or the bean stitch, single crochet in, chain two, and then come into the single crochet between the flowers and put in three double crochet. Please do this across and I'll see, show you how to finish row number two in a moment. So you're getting close to the end of row number two, you're in the middle one of here, and then this is the first single crochet you started with. So make sure you chain two and then your last single crochet that you had, you'll just put in two double crochets instead. And now you're gonna turn your work and begin row number three. So let's begin row number three. And whenever you start this one here, you're in the top of a double crochet and there's only two double crochets here. You're going to chain two, it won't count as anything. And you're going to do the bean stitch or the puff stitch in the first double crochet. So it's gonna be a bit tight. So just going at the top of the double crochet, pull through, and then wrap and in, in, pull through, and wrap and in, in. And this is gonna be a lot easier because you have more to hold on to. Pull through the group of fun, and then chain two, and then do another one into the same one. So just going right in, pull through. You'll get faster and the stitches will get more cleaner too. So pull through the group of fun, and then pull through the final two, and then chain one. Now you're gonna single crochet into the single crochet here. And then you're gonna move on. So you're gonna reach over to the middle one of the double crochet, and that's where you're gonna apply your first bean or puff stitch. Pull through, pull through two. Okay, so you're gonna chain two, do another in. And then chain two and do another one in. So the stitches are getting a lot nicer. And don't forget that after the third one is in, you need to chain one first and then single crochet into the single right here. So the dog is running upstairs. So you're gonna, after this single crochet is in, you don't chain one first, you just go right to the middle, double crochet, and then you start your, your puff or your bean stitch, depending on what you decided. Okay. And then chain two, and then in. So you're just putting your group there. Chain two. And then in again. 
So on the end of row number three, what we have to worry about is the ending. Sorry, the dogs are going crazy today. Pull through. And so at the end of the grouping of three, just chain up one and then single crochet. So at the end of the row, you have to just worry that you're only doing a half of a, of a flower, like you started on this side. And I'll be right back in a moment. Okay, when you're ready for the ending, you're gonna come into your very final top of the chain three, and you're gonna start and place in your bean or your puff stitch. Okay, chain two, and then you'll finish off with it with the puff or a bean stitch as your very last stitch. Like that. And that'll conclude then row number three. Let's turn our work and do row number four. So row number four, we're gonna go back to the fillers of putting in those three double crochets. So right where you're sitting, you're at the top of a half of a flower. So you're going to chain up only one and put one single crochet in the top of that stitch. Then you're going to chain two, and then the single crochet here, you're going to apply three double crochet. So notice the difference between rows number two and four. Okay, it's how you start. So then chain two, and single crochet into the top of the middle one of the, the either the puff or the, the bean stitch, depending on what you wanted chain two, and then single into the neck, or sorry, double crochet into the next um, single, and you'll put three of those in there. And you'll work your way across just like you had been before, and it's just how you started the row is different. So I'll see you at the end of the row. So coming at the end of row number four, you're just gonna chain two, and then you're just gonna come into the top of the last bean or the puff stitch to finish that off. You're gonna turn your work and let's do row number five. Row number five, right where you're sitting, you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet into the first. And then you're gonna start your flowers like you did when you were on row number one. So you're gonna to come to the middle one of the grouping of the three double crochet, and you're just gonna immediately start and do your puff stitches or your, your bean stitch, depending what you wanted. Make sure you do chain two between them and do it again. chain two and again and at the end of the third one just make sure you chain an extra one and then single into the next single and now everything's holding so it should be lined up with the first one that you did and then you'll start again so just come to the middle one of the grouping of the three and begin your bean or your puff stitch flowers again and I'll see you at the end of the row in just a moment. So I'm at the end of the last flower just chain up one and you're just going to reach on over and single crochet the last single crochet over. Okay and that's how you're going to finish. So you're going to turn your work and you're going to repeat rows number two through uh, five in order to complete this and it says that you only have to do that two more times from this point. So you do another set and then another set or as long as you want to go. When you get to the final of those, uh, after you get those two more times done, you're gonna repeat row number two just once and it will finish off with what you see here so that you don't end up having the, the, the dip downs. And so that's something that you can do. Okay, so this is a neat idea and uh, just any kind of yarns that you need to be able to weave in your ends. Let's just quickly talk about that. Make sure you do use a tapestry needle. Don't be cheap about the detail of, of doing it. So take your time. And when you drag it through, try to drag it through not only just the strands between the strands, but also try to separate the strands. Um, I see a lot of people complaining that things are falling out, but if you separate the, the actual plies itself, they get stuck a lot better. So that's something that you can decide what works for you. And of course, everybody has an opinion. <laughs> so you can do that and it's a really neat idea. And this is a great little project to be able to go. It's a bit of a tough start, but once you get onto this and understand it, it gets easier and easier. And of course, the sky's the limit on your colors. Have a good one, and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.